Good morning all. Welcome back to Morning Brews on Tottenham on Tour. On today's show, they've discovered water in Wales. Tottenham Hotspur lit beat Luton Town. Tottenham Hotspur are playing West Ham tonight. And we're talking about lone players. Tune in here. Good morning all, welcome back to Tottenham on Tour, your world famous morning news show. I am joined by the Roadman, as always. You've had a bit of a stressful morning, haven't you, David? I have, yeah, I really have, yeah. So uh, I had a bit of a leak from my toilet on Thursday night. Couldn't get all of any plumbers, but yeah, one's came around today, dead sound, and he's going to fix everything. So hence why we're late, because I've been dealing with the plumber. So it's all on me. I do apologise everyone who's been it's dying to see this amazing show. It's like, it's like, what's it called? It's like that moment when Birmingham discovered water. We discovered this thing called water. It makes everything in the house go. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> Bloody brilliant. <laughs> Absolutely brilliant. Uh, let's see who's in the chat to join us this morning. We got Tony Rodriguez, Mr. Sweden. Good to see you, mate. Good to see you. We got Shawnee e. Slater. Both of these guys are YouTube members and joining another one from the Guardians of the Pomba as well with Shawnee Slater is radiated. We have Andrew Gregory. Good to see you, mate. Good to see you. We've got Franz in the house, YouTube member. Good to see you. Good to see you. Bora da. Bora da. Bora da, Colin. Bora Good to see you. Good to see you, Kate Rickson. Good to see you, Kate. We've got Inner Hype with um, uh, and a bit of transfer news. So good. I'll start this. Hope we get to this. Good to see you in a hype. We've got Robert Wilson. Good to see you, Robert. Hopefully all well. We got Radiant with more transfer news. Uh, good to see you. Good to see you. Good to see you. John Rocher. Good to see you. Good to see you. Give him a nappy. Give him a nappy. Benjamin Foster's in the house. Good morning. We got Craig O'Sullivan from the Guardians of the Pombo, the chairman of the board. We've got my lovely QB. Good to see you, QB. Hopefully all well. Good to see her. We got Jason G. Good to see her. Right, let's get into the news. Uh, actually, no, we apologise that um, Andrew Management didn't go ahead as planned at the weekend. This is this is unfortunate, the thing that's going to happen with Brian over the next few months. Um, chronic fatigue is one of the most evil illnesses you can possibly uh, deal with. I, I've dealt with it in my life, um, in, in sp but not in the way Brian has, and I want everyone in the chat to wish Brian will get well soon. And this is going to be the new normal. Some days he's going to be absolutely fine whenever he can. And some days he goes to bed at 10 p.m. and wakes up at six o'clock in the afternoon. It, that is just the way it is. So everyone wish Brian a get well soon. And we apologise from everyone on Tottenham on tour that the show didn't go ahead as planned. Right. The Luton game, David. What was your thoughts on the Luton game? Well, uh... <clears throat> I put this up on Twitter, like and I said, Adam Sandler apparently was there watching. So I yeah. said uh, the comedy wasn't the only thing that was in the, that stadium yeah. that day because the first 45 minutes was a joke, mate. Yeah, Honestly, I mean, yes, we created a lot of chances in that first 45 minutes and players couldn't put the ball in the back of the net. That's fair. But overall, I thought the performance was in that 45 was mediocre. Again, we're watching a team only do half a match of football. Yeah. Um, I, I wouldn't even give it that, David. We played at least 15 good minutes of football in that game again. Yeah. yeah. And it was because Brennan Johnson came on, this player that everyone slates, everyone mm. criticises, you know, everyone always has an opinion about him and things like that. Yeah, he's winning his games. If we didn't win that game against Luton, if he didn't come on... We don't win that game. And then we're sitting here now in even more of a mood and saying different things. If it wasn't for him, and you know, it, it's getting frustrating watching it that a player gets criticized so much when he's doing things like that for us. I mean, he's yes, he's 22 years old. Yeah. But he's stepping up when we needed him. A player that's been in this in this club for years, Sonny, took until Brennan come on to step up. Kulazeski, who's been here now a plenty of time, took, couldn't step up. You know, he stepped up. And I thought 
when he came on, the whole dynamic changed. He unleashed Poro. Yeah. Poro had so much more freedom because the issue with Kulu, and even Anne said it afterwards, Kulu likes to cut in. And what that does is cause an overload because you've got Poro there. Sometimes you'll have a midfielder there and it causes an overload and there's no space. What he wants is his winger to overlap, come out on the outside and put the ball in low. And Poro, in that second half, when Brennan came on, you seen him. He had so much more freedom. He had shots. He was getting forward more. And I think that's what Kulu really needs to start learning now. Kulu is not a bad player. He's no. just not fitting the system. This is what you're seeing with Kulu, is a player who's not fitting the system correctly. And that that's an issue for him, you know, because he's a talent. I mean, he's created more chances for us than anyone else in the team. Yeah. But the chances he's creating, the players that are getting on the end of their chances are not in the position to be able to score majority of the time. Yeah. You know, I mean, if you if Werner puts in that goal where he just clips the post, we're talking about an incredible assist by Kulu. Yeah. It was a hell of a pass towards him. So there's little little bits within there that we still need tweaking. But, you know, I see people criticise it's elite when we should be battering them. We have no right to batter any team. Get, yeah. You don't even think that. We have no right. You know, Rob Edwards has got Luton. Playing really good football. Fantastic. The they played yeah. brilliantly in that first half. They were brilliant. But then if you yes, were to no, not yeah, we were terrible, but they were brilliant. Yeah, yeah. But if you if you were to take the game and look at just stat numbers, yeah, without watching the game, you think we absolutely battered them. We had like over 70 odd possession. We had like stupid amount of shots. Yes, they weren't all on target, but overall you still got defenders on the pitch, mm. defend shots, block shots, etc. But um, I think we need to start being more consistent with our football. You know, yeah. we've got to get this, we've got to start playing more. Um, I mean, over a 90 minute period, the whole team needs to start contributing more. We can't keep having this one player here, one player there coming on and deciding the game. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm, it's, it's weird because Ange says he wants his winger to go wide and overlap, why doesn't he just swap that and just say, okay, Kulo, you want to go narrow, you go narrow. Poro, go wide. Why yeah. is he telling them both, why are they both going narrow? Why can't he just say, you go narrow? Because you, again, one of the great things about management, if you've ever managed anyone, I've not managed footballers, but I've managed people in, in business in terms of working in team ethics, if you know someone is not good at making coffee, you're not having them on the espresso machine. You have them at the till, you have them on the sandwiches, you have them on anywhere else yeah. but the coffee machine. And when their standard comes up on the coffee ship machine, that's when you let them have a few shifts on the machine. And you you know, you know put your best players in their best positions. Poro is not a central midfielder. He is a wingback. He's always played wingback. When he played for sporting, he was a wingback. And he really, I'd love to see it at some point, play Poro as a winger because he would be fantastic there. I think as much as Johnson had a really good game and it was brilliant at the weekend, I think Poro would be a more consistent player in that position at the moment because he's more experienced. So play Poro yeah. on the wing, buy a new right back at the week, at the week in the summer that can play right back, play Poro on the wing and let him cross the ball because that's what Poro... Poro's crossing is so pinpoint, especially when he puts them low and hard. It creates an absolute, it creates mayhem. Yeah. So for me, I think Ange, I think he's mildly thrown Kulisevsky under the bus because we know that Kulisevsky, Kulisevsky is at his best when he's in the middle, which is why when he was at Juventus, he played behind Ronaldo. That is when he's at his best because he's yeah. big, he's tall, he's strong, he's a good ball carrier, he's technically very good. He's not a winger. He's not, he's not, he's fast, but he's not like, um, he's not get to the top speed very quickly. That's why, that's the difference between him and Johnson. Johnson gets to top speed very quickly. The, the, he's a pacey player. He gets Yeah, to yeah, speed. yeah. Kulisevsky's fast, but he, he takes a while to get there. So it's, it's, he needs, we need to start you managing the team differently for the different personnel we have on the pitch. You know, uh, is that sounding a bit, uh, for me, that sounds commonsensical, David. But it, it does, yeah, I agree. But then again, you could you could argue the point that yeah. you know, as a, as a as a fan base, we always see upgrades to the team and yeah. 
things like that. So you could turn around and say, well, then maybe we look to replace Kulu in the summer. Obviously, we don't want to, but I'm not yeah. saying that. By the way, I'm not saying to replace Kulu, but I'm just yeah. going on Ben's point of obviously switching players. Does Ange really want to bother with that? Does Ange want to have to tweak the team to fit the player rather than buying the player to fit his team? That's what we want to see, wouldn't we? Is yeah. we're in the summer, we're bringing in players in to actually fit what Ange wants, not Ange having to tweak players just because they can't fit a certain position. Yeah. You know, we'd, I'd rather, you know, 11 players who fit the position, fit each position, who can yeah. play Ange's system properly, and the ones on the bench, again, who come off the bench, do fit that system and play like that. I think that's, mm. you know, for me, I, that's what you'd prefer. But obviously, depending on Levy and what happens in the summer, you know, yeah. which who knows from the quotes from Ange, like it's not going to sign, it's not going to, it doesn't sound very good. But yeah. at the end of the day, I still have faith in Kulu. You know, I mean, if we had a better, say, if we had someone better up front, a more, um, you know, oh, how can I explain it? Say, like, a taller, a taller player than Sonny, someone who gets in the air who will control the ball better in that sense. I think Kulu would work. But at the moment, you know, you can criticise him because he's not doing the job, whereas someone like Brennan is. I mean, even Timu, people are slating him, having a go at him because he's not putting the ball in the back of the net and that. Fair. That's a great criticism. His, his, Everyone finishing, can have it. his finishing It's dreadful. Shocking. If he could score, honest God, if he could score, yeah, right, you'd be talking into levels of Mbappe. But you're not. You're talking to levels of less than a championship player when it comes to striking a ball. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's dreadful. But he contributed twice yesterday yeah. to help build up towards them both them goals. That's what we want. We want to win games. And if a player can do little bits like that, then fine, that's okay. But we need players now who can yeah. do that con constantly, yeah. you know what I mean? But with extra end product and that. But it's also proven, I think, a lot of people have been trying to... I was talking with this with Graham, uh, Big Up Graham, the other day. And we're, we're talking about maybe making Kulisevsky into a number 10 when Madison is a fit. There's only one player for me that should be playing number 10 if... Um, if um, if um, Madison isn't there, and it's Son Hyun Min, he showed with that second goal why he should be number 10. Gets the ball in the hole, drives forward with it, lays off Timo Werner, who gives the ball to Brennan Johnson. He lays it back, back of the net. Son puts it in the back. He should be in the hole because he is a creator. He is, a t he is good on the ball. He is good with both feet. That's if... Like, we. We shouldn't be shoehorning Kulisevsky into that number 10 position. If he, if we don't have that number 10, it shouldn't be Lacelso. It should be Son Hyun Min. Johnson on the right, Timo Werner on the left, Son in the middle, Richarlison up front. I think that's a uh, that's how you get everyone in. And I think that suits the way of play. But Son can play that number 10 role because he is a creator. He can pass a football. And he's... But he makes that space with his pace. That's what he's good at, Sonny. He uses his explosive pace to get a two yards, makes makes a decision, either takes a shot on or passes the ball forward and then makes a run. I, that's my, if that's what I'm thinking. I think that's, and this is what me and Graham said, if anyone should be number 10 other than Madison, it should be Sonny. Yeah, but I'd say more as in the latter stages of the game yeah. as a tactical tweet. Starting Sonny there, I don't think he'd be as effective personally. Um, because if you watch the Luton game, we didn't see Sonny barely at all in that match, really. And it was only until the latter stages we actually yeah. seen him be more effective when Luton were tired. Luton, obviously, they made little tweaks themselves, which allowed Sonny that. I think Again, starting there with the wingers, yeah. wingers, because wingers were taking Being on wingers, their man. Their wingers were our wingers were taking on their man which stretches the play, which gives that space in the number 10 role. Which yeah, which I think play. that's where it becomes more effective in the last yeah. stages of the game. For me, anyway, I wouldn't start him there. Um, but I agree, Sonny can do that. Um, he's, we've seen it loads. He's done it many, many games where he's mm. dropped a little deeper, received the ball, and then just on the turn, gone. Yeah, And it causes the, their midfield and their defence to be facing 
the back facing towards goal, checking yeah. back. And it allows other players to, obviously, like you said, the wingers to move in and do what they need to do. But yeah, I definitely think that's more of a tactical switch rather than a starting point for me. And I'd the like same to know, David. I'll, I think just give it a FA shot. Cup, if an FA Cup game next year, I will try it. I will tr- and tr- I'll trial it. Play well, hopefully we don't need more, to. Play, play two more defensive style players. So play like a Benzema and a Basuma or a Saar and a Benzema. Players that more do more of the ethic and more hold the ball more. Just say, Sonny, do what you want. Get the ball. You've got total freedom to do what you yeah. want. And we know Ange likes that anyway. Have total freedom. Do whatever the hell you want. Go where you want. Don't need to track back. But Sonny likes to track back. He's a hard worker. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Go where you want. Do what you want. Make damage. Because I think that will suit everyone. Because I think that will suit the entire team. And he will and he will pick up spaces round the edge of the box, which will mean he will be more deadly. Yeah. No, no, I, I, I agree with that. I agree with that. He would. But I'm hoping next season... Um, at the start of the season, we don't need to do these things because we've got the right personnel in to yeah. fill these roles. I mean, we need a we need a few players gone. Um, yeah. You know, the midfield needs sorting out. We've got Lucas Bergvall coming in, who is absolutely balling. Ever since yeah. he signed for us, he looks incredible. The last yeah. game we had, he had a goal. He's man of the match, and he, he's doing great. Hopefully, he can. Um, for me, the Celso is a good player. Right, but unless we change our kit to white and blue stripes and change it to Tottenham, Hotel, 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 he's got we're to never going to see them. We're he's never going to see him. So he has to go. Hoybia, obviously, we know he's going. That's a guaranteed with his comments and and Ange saying that well, he trains well and all that. But if Basuma is doing dreadful like he has done, we got to be honest with it. He's been absolutely poor. Yeah. And Hoybia can't get a start. That tells you what Ange thinks of Hoybia. So then. Yeah. Easily them in the midfield gone. Um, I think we need to add wingers. We need to we need to add defenders. I'm sorry, you know, yeah. Dragusin played out of position, right? And he, it took him a bit to get into the game, which is fair. He's only had I two. Thought he had a good game, he had a real, That's what I was going to. He, he had, had a really good game. good game, and his driving forward. That's what you want. That aggressiveness. That person who wants to just take the ball, help the team out, push forward, just get up there, run past players, and he did that really good. Hmm. But again. We conceded another goal. And it's becoming a theme this season where it's just teams can score against us no matter who it is. It's the system. We only play with two at the back. It's the yeah. system. And for me, like I know Van der Ven's back and he'll probably start against West Ham. Yeah. I, I, I honestly feel like, you know what I mean, within even now or the next game, you're going to see him injured again because yeah. the system's forcing him to get back all the time, constantly. We need a bit more structure. We need to do, basically, take the ball, control the back, then build up, then go for the attack, not just be constant on it, on it, on it, on it, on it. You know what I mean? Because it needs us way open at the back, and we're conceding. You know, that Luton goal, that could have been easily dealt with. Yeah, because of the system and the way it sat, we look like headless chickens at the back, puddle getting blocked off by a player. Romero standing there waiting for the ball to come in. You've got Dragusin covering his nuts again because he's scared he's not going to have kids after the last time he got clacked in him. You know, things like that. Just allowed them to get that goal. It was just a, it was just a mess at the back. So, you know, we need... We need I'm hoping in the summer and obviously the little break we have with pre-season, Ange can start setting all this into motion, get the right players in, get the right backups in. And we see a better, more productive team, a more consistent yeah. one. <laughs> Keep him making it. I'm trying to slip Sonny into any position. If we're only <laughs> have, that, that is, he's the only he can play. He plays in any position on the pitch, and he's still our best player. It's it's unbelievable. It's unbelievable how good this guy is, isn't it? He yeah. is just he's just generational. He's not. He's not. Uh, I'm not going to put him into that ultra world class bracket. But as a Top level performer, he performs just every single. Yeah, he might go a bit missing in that in that number nine because he's not a number nine. That's such a, a specialized position. That like, yeah. Charleston's been playing that position his entire life, and he goes missing in some games. 
That is a very specialised position against very special... Against the Luton Town, where they've got bigger, broader-shouldered defenders. You need someone that's going to be like an Ivan Tony, Back to goal, back, back to goal, batter them. Make that space for yeah. stuff. Pass the ball forward and then spin in behind. Sonny's not that player. He's, again, burst of pace, gets that thing, drives forward. He, he, he likes to play with his front to goal to be able to see left and right, to be able to make something happen. Again, yeah. we that is we'll make this into um, a transfer special before <laughs> five minutes before we talk about it. Yeah, do we need an orthodox number nine to play in these games to be a bit of a bulldozer? Yeah, for me, we need and oh, I get criticised when I say this, and I know, but we need another basically like a Lorente, a big yeah. early striker who's strong likes to hold the ball up because the way we play when them low crosses come in if i'm just going to keep playing like that you need that striker who can hold the ball up right rich Hollison can do it in parts but obviously there's rumors that he's going to be leaving in the summer so we got to think about that but we need a player who's good in the air who's strong who's got decent feet you know someone like that someone who's really big you know for me, that's who we need. <laughs> yeah. Plays on it. Plays this, on it left back. Yeah, just playing me, everywhere. Right. I've seen all over Twitter, right? Yeah. You know what I mean? Players being criticized and all that, yeah. And not being given time. Players need time. Yeah. If we if we if we wanted Sonny gone in his first season, yeah. Yeah. Right? Which most did. Even Sonny himself wanted to leave this club in his first season. Yeah. Now look at him. He's our fifth all time goal scorer. Yeah, come on, you know, Bale, Kane, all of them. If they weren't given time, we wouldn't have watched these really incredible players, mm. you know. And we need a lot of players in, we need we need a good set yeah. amount of players in. I yeah. definitely, need a, definitely need someone that can cross the ball, yeah. But a Lorente is a really good shout out, someone like that because Lorente was good with his feet, Peter Crouch as well. You, yeah. you think of him like this wacky, waving, inflatable arm, waving tube man, but with his feet, it was fantastic. Movable, and then gut. We, we need someone, a number nine, who's going to make that space for those those more um, free flowing players. You can't have an entire team full of players that's, that move position. You've no. got to have one guy that's in a certain position all the time. Yeah, you, I, I think one of the things we need to look at is an orthodox number nine. Not that yeah. there is many of them at the moment, but <laughs> but th that's what I think we need at the moment. Yeah, we do, we do, and we need to, like I said, because if you watch that goal that Sonny scored, right, yeah. Verma gets the ball out, puts a low ball in, Brennan gives a quick little dink off to Sonny, Sonny scores. Yeah, we rarely see that within the game. Yeah, because we've got no one up there doing that. What Brennan did at that one point. Yeah, a North Rock striker, a big player like you. Look at Lorente. Yeah, if you yeah. watch the way he played, he used to do that all the time. He'll hold the ball up, then lay it off. Yeah, right. Richarlison tries that at times, but other times he wants to turn. He wants to get a goal. He wants to score because in his head he struggled at times and yeah. he wants to get that goal. So he's not doing that part. Ferguson of Brighton, yeah. great shout. A player yeah. like that, you know, I think he'd work very well in this type of system. Yeah. If you watch Lorente, for me, I've always said this, Lorente is one of the reasons we got into the Champions League. If you watch the Ajax game, the amount of times he got that ball towards him and then laid it off to the likes of Delhi, to um, Mora and players like that, it, it, it annoys the defence because they're yeah. trying to hold off their striker and then as soon as he lays it off, You've got players running at them when their backs face toward backs to God's goal. Yeah. So they have to turn, they have to try and readjust. And it's a nightmare. Yeah. We just haven't had that for a while now. Mm. And for me, I think we need a striker like that. And Ferguson is a cracking show. I think he'd actually do really well. He's tall, yeah. he's strong, he can hold the ball up and he can play it off. I think he can score a goal, to be fair. <laughs> Before we go on to the West Ham game, which we'll put 10 minutes on because yeah, this would put ten minutes. Like, what? Uh, we've heard some loan news that from um, a lot of Plymouth fans are not happy with Alfie Devine, are they? So, Brian Dable versus Plymouth Argyle. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, he got sent off in his last game uh, where uh, Plymouth lost. 
Mm. I think they did. Uh, he, he's had a bit of a bad loan. It started off okay. He's struggling a little bit. Yeah. Is that something to do with the fact that they want to sell, sack their manager? Is he? Does the manager have an issue? Is it? It could be. It could be anything, you know. But it he's not be, having the best of loans. A player, not, a player has not clicked with a manager. That can happen. No. No, that's it. But then you look at Valise as well. He's gone over to Seville. He's not getting any game time. We're looking yeah. to readjust his loan now to another team because he's not getting game time. I said from the start, I didn't like the fact that he's going to Seville, just like I didn't like the fact that Brian Hill went back there. They need yeah. English loans. You know, we need to get him in playing English football. There's no point sending him abroad where the football is yeah. completely different. Hmm. And basically, all he's done is chilled with Lamella. Yeah, you know what I mean. That's all he's done. Yeah, he's chilling, with time, chilling with Lamella. Yeah, but Valise. If you look at Le- Valise, yeah, right, and you look at his style of play, in a few years he'll be that striker I was talking about. Yeah, he's strong, good in the air, and he can hold the ball up. Right, yeah. he's got a couple of years before he gets to that point, though. Mm. But yeah, they need English loans. Um, Ashley Phillips is apparently doing well. Yeah. Um, he got man of the match. Um, I've seen a few Plymouth fans saying he didn't deserve it, and other players did, and things. But he's doing well. He's doing all right within the loan, but yeah. And then we look at um, Lucas Bergval. I know it's not really a loan because technically he's just gone back to his club and we're not getting him until the summer. He is absolutely balling over there. Yeah. He is a talent. I mean, I'm so excited to see him in the summer. I really am. I hope preseason Ange gives him a chance because he yeah. looks so good. He looks like a player we've been screaming for. Yeah. That, and I know... Please don't hate me when I point this out, but like an Erdegaard style player. Yeah. That player in the midfield. Yeah. That Erdegaard style player, one who just gets the ball, has a bit of freedom in that midfield. Yeah. And I think he's looking really, really good. Um, Vuskovic, I think he got an assist from a keeper, I believe, if I'm right in saying that. Um, The keeper scored a hell of a long goal, apparently. And uh, yeah, he uh, got the assist for it. But yeah. We're, I'm excited about these players, but we need to bring in more. We need to bring yeah. in a lot of players. We need that bench to be like our first 11. Yeah. Because you look at City at the moment, right? When they lose a couple of players, they have what they have some of the best players in the world. But their bench at the moment, the players they're bringing off, you know, they're struggling. You know, look at Doku. Yeah. Right? Spurs fans were screaming for Doku. Yeah. He is terrible. I'm sorry. I'm going to say it now. I'll be honest. You know what I mean? He has done nothing in that City team to warrant starting Grealish. Struggling. And there is a big issue between Grealish and Pep at the moment because after the match, Pep was having a right win game. I don't know if you've seen it after the Arsenal match, but Pep, my mic has an echo. I can't hear an echo, so keep going. Keep going. Yeah, but um, yeah, apparently uh, Grealish... I watched the end of the match, like, and Grealish was having a right win. I mean, Pep was having a right win, Jim. Yeah. You know, and that's the thing. And that's when we look at Divine and look at loan yeah. deals and everything. You have that little there where could it be the manager telling Divine they start the other and Divine struggling to, you know, mm-hmm. play that way that the manager wants. It's yeah. not being him. We don't know because we're not sitting there watching the loan. We're not sitting there within the club seeing what the manager's saying to him. But overall, yeah, we've got some good talent coming in. I like the loan deals, you know, you know, especially with Phillips. But um Valise needs another one. Luke Spearwell's balling, Buskovic yeah. looks great. But we need a lot more players. We need a lot more players. Absolutely. Let's talk about the West Ham game for five, ten minutes before we end the show. It's an interesting one, isn't it? If the if West Ham had won against Newcastle, I would be actually less worried about the game. <laughs> I think because they now need to bounce back after that performance against Newcastle, now I'm slightly worried. Because if we do what we usually do and we don't turn up for the first 45 minutes, that could be a real issue. Because West Ham do start quite, not quickly, but like they have got, a, um, they can go 3-1 up against the Newcastle. They can do it. And when we go 2-3 down, we never come back usually because we, we crumble. We crumble because of the way we start chasing a game. And we have a propensity to concede loads of goals. So what's your views about tonight? And set pieces as well. Set yeah. pieces will be a massive issue tonight. Yeah, I mean, with um, 
Van der Ven back, I think that's going to be a big boost for us because of the likes of Kudus and yeah. Bowen with their pace. West Ham at the moment play counter-attacking football. They yeah. play what we played under Jose, basically. Moyes has changed his tactics and he started to play that side of football. For me, it's the counter-attacks that are going to kill us and the set pieces. They're the two we've got to really be worried about. Yeah. And if we don't turn up, we're going to see them put a fair few goals against us. Yeah. But as you've seen against the Newcastle game, West Ham drop off like we did on Jose. First 45, we always started off strong. Yeah. As soon as half time came after that, that's when it all went. We went one nil up and 10 men behind the ball for the rest of the game. And then it was dreadful after that. Yeah. We struggled to break a low block, which West Ham will create. West Ham will sit back and create a low block. It's going to be a tight game. I don't know which way it's going to go. Um, if, if we, if we play like we did against Luton, it's not going to be good for us. Yeah. Simple as West Ham are struggling as well. So yeah, it's a hard one. I think we'll win. I think I'm hoping I'm praying we win because my partner MZ, she is a West Ham fan. Obviously a lot in the chat. know, And yeah. I want to, I want to throw her on the couch tonight because I don't want to, I want to smash them. I want to absolutely hammer them. I was on the couch. Now. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's the battle of the couch. Exactly. Yeah. I think someone said it in the chat. There you go. Yeah. It's who's on the couch. Derby. MZ said this. <laughs> though, yeah. It's on the, who's on the couch. Derby tonight. Yeah. Um, I, I think we can do all right. I th- it depends on who he sits in midfield. This is struggling. And I mean, against Kudus and against the likes of um, Suchek and that, I worry for Bissouma because he can, if he if he tries to go close to Kudus, Kudus will do him. Yeah. And he'll give away too many fouls. And I don't think we're going to get a lenient ref tonight. I really don't. Yeah. So I think- it's one of them. I'm hoping we win. I think we could if we really be clinical. But we need to use our wingers. We yeah. really do. And this is going to be controversial and people are going to laugh at me in the chat. I'm sorry. Brennan Johnson should not start this game. Yeah. If Brennan Johnson starts this game, Emerson, right, we'll, we'll, we'll keep him. We'll just keep him all game. Right? Kulu should start this game to knock her out. Emerson right? And let Emerson feed off Kulu's style of play, that slow build-up, that taking his time, cutting in and stuff like that, then to bring Johnson on. Mm. Now, everyone knows I'm an advocate of Johnson. He should not start this game because he will not be effective. Yeah. I'm being honest now. He, he shouldn't. I think Ange will start him and he will get criticised for it because he's gonna not going to be effective with it. Yeah. He needs to come on as a sub against tired legs against West Ham. That's where we're... That's where we'll see the game a bit better. Yeah. He's not playing well exactly, no. Kate. He's really he, not. He was really bad the other day. Yeah. He was really bad. Um, set pieces are an issue as well. We are terrible at set pieces. <laughs> yeah. And there's one thing that West Ham are very good at because they've got <laughs> one of the best set piece takers in the world, someone I actually quite wanted, even for the silly price of £40 million. Pounds. James Ward-Prowse always has a game against us. Always has a game against us. Yeah. And it's it's a it's a worry, isn't it? Their set piece. It's their set piece um can be very difficult. Yeah, especially especially when you look when you when you've got Suchek, right? <clears throat> when you've got a lanky midfielder like Suchek, he's always going to get in the end of a, a corner or a free kick. Now yeah. We really, really got to make sure we match him with someone. I'd like, I'd, honestly, against West Ham, I'd like to see a back three. I'd mm. like to see Romero, Dragusin, yeah. and Van der Ven. I, I totally agree with you. Because back Dragusin three, in the air. What I would do, back three, uh, Van der Ven, Dragusin, Romero, five in midfield, three, five, two, wing backs, Udogi and. Uh, Play three in midfield, two up top. Play um, play Sonny and Kudasevsky. Yeah, that's yeah. what I would play. Yeah, that is what I would play. Yeah, that would, that would give you that that those wing backs that Ange loves. It give you the pace down and the wingers to cross the ball in the box. Kudasevsky will be playing in his best position, which is be able to play back to goal. Move Sonny gets yeah. that pace. That is what I would do. That would that would make sense. Yeah, that it would really make would. sense. 
And if you want anyone who's good at set pieces, it's Ragusin. He is amazing yeah. in the air. Yeah. And against the likes of Suchek, even Bowen. I mean, Bowen's not a tall player, but Lucas Moore wasn't. But he seems to get on the end of them balls with his head. Yeah. We need someone who can be strong and fight against the likes of Suchek and that. Ragusin's mm. that player. And I, I think, yeah, I think that it would be a cracking system to play against West Ham. It would give West Ham a false sense of um, security with that attacking sense yeah. because it's a different formation to what we played. Yeah. But overall, the structure and it'd just be solid. For me, it'd yeah. be solid. And it'd give our midfielders a little bit more um, cover as well if you're playing wing backs yeah. because you could push out one of the defenders like a Romero who could push up into like, like a similar six position. Yeah. to cover that, to give more freedom to the midfielder. So you don't even have to play a Basuma. You no. can play a Madison, a Saar, and a Le Celso if you chose to, or a Bentancourt, and have them controlling that midfield and pushing up forward. Because I thought Bentancourt looked like his old self against Luton when he came on. He was all, he was, he was great. Le Celso did fantastic, you know? And his tracking back against Luton, I will want to point that out. For a guy who's been out, he ran back and took that ball off that Luton play. I thought that was fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. So it, with that system, then it gives you a bit more play within yeah. the game. Will Ange do that? We know he's not. Ange is stuck yeah. in his ways. It's going to be a back two. It's going to be a free midfield. It's going to be obviously wingers and all that. So yeah, yeah. But you know, I think it's going to be it's going to be a boring game. I will say that because West Ham are going to sit back and we're going to try and break They're them down. They're going to make it boring. <laughs> They're going to make it scrappy, and that yeah. that's what they should do: make it scrappy. Yeah. Because oh, we, we are, don't. we are a soft touch. We yeah, are a we soft don't. touch. I, that's the thing, Ben. That's it, there, mate. I'm glad you said that because we don't make it scrappy anymore. We try and be precise. We try and be. Everything has to be perfect. It doesn't have to be perfect. You know, you can do things a little bit off the cut. And yeah, so I'm, I'm, I'm slightly worried, but also not because West Ham are struggling in a lot of stages of the game where we're better in the last stages of the game. Me saying that now means West Ham are going to go 1-0 up in the first half and we're, they're going to hit a low block and we're not going to break them down for 90 minutes. So, yeah, yeah that's basically what it's going to be. Yeah. Yeah. But that is what's going to happen. They're yeah. going to get a set piece early in the game, get a goal, 10 men behind the ball for the whole game. Yeah. Well, they'll do and we struggle. Yeah. We struggle when we play those types. We don't like physicality. We do not like physicality when we play football. We have got through a few games, like the Everton game we got few. We were the worst team in that game, in the, the original, the first Everton game yeah, at home. Yeah, yeah. We don't like playing physical teams. We really don't like it. And this is where we need to add them physical players, like we were talking about, yeah? About adding a new six into the position, a Paulinia, an Onana, someone like that. Someone who's strong, someone who likes to make the dirty... You know, the dirty challenges, the strong challenges, the shoulder to shoulders, the, the things like that. Like Adogi for me, Adogi's got that bit in him, right? He's still young, but he's a physical player, right? Yeah. And I think I think if we focus on that side against Sufal, Sufal has been giving away a lot of fouls lately. He's been yeah. struggling. Now, if we set Adogi against him with Verma, I think he'll struggle. I really do. Emerson yeah. on the right side, not so much. Emerson's got that bit of calmness about him. And he will be able to control Shame that we side. haven't got a calm Emerson. Sorry, Nick. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so it's gonna be, it's, it's not going to be a class game. It's not going to be a world of game. I think it's going to be slightly boring. But I'm hoping we win. I've got, I've got a feeling we could do it. I've got a feeling we could win. And it's, it's a must win for me. It's another game that's like a final. Yeah, Villa managed to win their game, and we want to get that top four spot. The only way we're yeah. going to do that is if we beat these teams. So, yeah. <laughs> oh, bloody hell, Nick. Uh, final thoughts on the game before we end the stream? Uh, close down Kudus, limit Bowen, and... That's the player I'm about this. the most. I absolutely yeah. love Jared Burren as a player. I think he's absolutely class. If I had, could sign any player in the summer, he'd be the player I'd sign. Sorry, MZ. He is just class. I think yeah. he is the winger we need. It, it, like He's direct. He crosses a ball. He scores goals. He works hard. Takes on his man. 
He takes on he his everything. He is awesome. I agree. And, and you see, I'd be I'd be flattered is that this guy is so good. He's so yeah. good. Mate, and what annoys me is yeah, is how much they paid for him. Yeah. He was so cheap out of nowhere, and yet look at him. He's a player who wants to play football. He's a player who enjoys it and he yeah. works at it. He's so good. But yeah, I I I want to win so badly. But yeah, I agree with what everyone's saying. It's got a draw screaming all over it. Yeah. It's got a draw screaming all over it. And the one thing I'm glad is they haven't got Lanzini anymore. <laughs> because that that still t- that still gets me to this day, mate. Me and MZ yeah. still talk about it to this day. Every time West Ham plays, she's like, you're going to batter us. And I'm like, did you remember the Lanzini game? Yeah. Shut up. You know? No. Until Doesn't you can't like there until the <laughs> final whistle goes. But on that note, David, it's time to end the show. Uh, thank you, David, for joining me as always. We will be no back worries. tomorrow on Morning Brews the, every single day. And please, if you haven't already, there is 168 of you watching on Twitter and on YouTube. Please subscribe to the Coffee Company R, my second channel. That would really help me out. I'm trying to get closer to 700, but we're just not getting there. Thank you all so much for watching today's show. Have a brilliant rest of your day. And as always, if you smell what the cough is brewing. Thank you so much for watching. Ciao for now. Uh